Good morning. It is awesome to be here surrounded by people who want to turn Minnesota red in 2018. Really nice to be out of St. Paul too. I did bring some good news for you today. Last week we finished Governor Mark Dayton's final legislative session. But unfortunately in his eight years he has done some damage to our great state. He brought us massive tax hikes, he brought us Obamacare and Minsure here to Minnesota, he unionized our daycare providers, he gave, or attempted to, we stopped him. He gave huge pay raises to his commissioners and he brought us the disaster of Minlars. The bottom line is Governor Dayton has failed at his job. In fact, he has been so disconnected with Minnesotans that his, cap, his parking spot at the Capitol sits empty almost every day. He doesn't even show up to work. He's at his governor's mansion, not engaged with legislators, and not listening to Minnesotans. And nowhere in this state is there a better example of that than here in CD8. Lifelong Union Democrats in northern Minnesota have been abandoned by DFL party leaders like Mark Dayton. First on the Sandpiper Pipeline, and now on the Polymet Mine, the Twin Metals Mine, and Enbridge Line 3. A few weeks ago, we had a bill on the House floor that would have helped the progress of Enbridge Line 3. And the Speaker of the House doesn't speak very often on the House floor. In fact, it's my first time, and only time, in four years. And I think it's been a dozen years since the Speaker of the House spoke on the House floor. I probably couldn't say it better now, so take a look at that speech. The member from Isanti, Representative Dell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and members. It's been interesting to watch this debate uh, over the last uh, few months and, and, and few years. Uh, you know, I can remember a time when Democrats in this state supported jobs. Um, but it seems like that day has passed. My brother is a 49er, and I see the hard hat unions out in the hallways out here advocating for these jobs. What we're talking about here is a $3 billion private investment. And I'm going to say that again in a few minutes, but I'll let it sink in. A $3 billion private investment. You remember that the Viking Stadium, which was $1 billion, you all thought that was such a great idea that you paid for half of it. This is a $3 billion private investment. It's like 6,000 jobs in the state of Minnesota. And what will happen to them? We know what will happen to them. Because we were all here when the Sandpiper Pipeline was supported to death by our governor. And I can't tell you how many times our governor said publicly that he supported the Sandpiper Pipeline, which was a similar investment. But Enbridge said, you know what? We can only be slow rolled long enough we're going to invest in the Dakota Access Pipeline, which by the way right now is pumping oil. And those jobs, if, I got to tell you, if you haven't looked at a map to see where the Dakota Access Pipeline goes, take a look at it. It literally goes right around the state of Minnesota. Through North Dakota, South Dakota, across the Minnesota-Iowa border, within yards of the border. And what did we lose? Thousands of good paying jobs. Thousands of union jobs. But today on this floor, it's Republicans who are going to stand up for those union jobs. Not Democrats. Thousands of those jobs. And not only that, property tax revenue. I could ask a few members to yield to ask how much property tax revenue their counties and cities and school districts lost because that pipeline didn't go across. I'm looking at Representative Heinzman nod his head. I think it would have been a 20% increase 
in the, in, the, in the property taxes collected in Crow Wing County alone. Just think of the public, you know, the, the, uh, the uh, public service, the, the uh, firefighters and police officers that could have been hired. Just think of the boon to the school districts in that area. Or they could have chosen to reduce property taxes for homeowners. But we didn't get that. And you know who got the jobs? North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa. That's the problem, members. We can create all these false narratives and pit this group of people against that group of people. Or we can choose to support the people who are here in the hallways, who put on hard hats and go to work every day. We can choose together to support their jobs for Minnesotans right here in this state. Or you can vote against them and try to pit this group of Minnesotans against that group. They want these jobs. They want this private investment in this state. Oh yeah, it was, the, it was the Obama administration that said we should replace this pipeline. That's how controversial it is. But let's not miss an opportunity to pit this group of people against that one and try to kill this in the name of the environment. I'm tired of the false choice. We don't have to choose jobs or the environment. We can actually do both. Everybody knows these pipelines are the safest way to transport oil in the state. The safest way. And instead, you're not stopping the oil from coming. It might feel good. You might tell the protesters that show up here once in a while that you're doing something really great. But you're not stopping any oil from coming out of the ground. They're putting it on the rails and driving it right next to your elementary schools and right next to your nursing homes, right through small towns all across the state and not just small towns, it comes right here through the metro. The oil's coming out of the ground, you're not going to stop it. What you're going to do is stop the jobs and you're gonna stop the property tax revenue. That's what you're stopping. All in the name of the environment. It's not a choice. With technology today, we can protect the environment and we can create jobs. And I'm so damn proud to stand here and tell you that I'm glad that my party is the one that's standing up for those jobs and knows that you can protect the environment. The speaker doesn't speak very often on the House floor, right? I noticed it got kind of quiet in here. But you know what? I'm going to be the one who stands up for those jobs. And I'm going to ask each one of you, when that board opens up and those lights start lighting up, are you going to stand up for jobs in this state? Or are you going to send them to North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, Illinois? That's your choice. And when you leave this chamber today, I want you to look at the people in the face out there who want these jobs and want this investment and tell them that you didn't have their back. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That was actually completely spontaneous. I didn't tell anybody I was going to do it. And I'll tell you what, you never know when the Lord's going to move you. Uh, but I felt like somebody had to speak up for those jobs. And that's what it looks like to stand up for Minnesotans. And that's what it looks like to stand up for jobs. And I'm damn proud that it's our party that's doing it. Every Democrat in the Minnesota House voted against that bill and voted against those jobs. Every single one. <laughs> Including the one that's running for Congress in CD8. <laughs> but we sent that bill through the House, they sent it through the Senate, we put it on the governor's desk, but our governor vetoed that bill and vetoed those jobs. <laughs> that's why this election is so important. Republicans have an incredible opportunity to reach Minnesotans who have been let down, left behind, and forgotten by Democrat Mark Dayton. We have seen the results of what a good policy can do in the Minnesota House. When I was elected minority leader, we had 61 members. Today, we have 77. That's eight more members than we've ever had after a presidential election. 
And despite divided government, our team has accomplished an incredible amount. We've delivered the largest tax relief package in nearly 20 years, including eliminating the state tax on 72,000 Minnesotans' Social Security income. We invested in road and bridge projects across the state using existing funds that we already collect. We spent them on things that you expect them, us to spend them on, on roads and bridges, and we did it by defeating the Democrats' gas tax increase. We stopped all funding from the state of Minnesota for Southwest Light Rail. We put it in law. It's literally against the law to spend money on Southwest Light Rail now. We ended the last in, first out default policy for laying off teachers so that we can keep the best educators in our classrooms. We block Democrats' attempts to give illegal immigrants to driver's license and radical left ideas like disarming our police officers. And I'll tell you what, I'm really honored to lead what I think is the best team ever, the members of the Minnesota House. So please, I want to ask members of the Minnesota House to stand up and be recognized. Give them a round of applause. They work really hard on your behalf, and these members are up for election this year, and they need your help and your support. We are fired up to have the governor's office, two U.S. Senate seats, all of our constitutional offices, and a special election in the Senate on the ballot with us. Let's seize this opportunity this year to show Minnesotans that we're fighting for them where Democrats have failed them. And let's start by turning our more state house districts red then we'll turn our congressional districts red, we'll turn our constitutional offices red, and we will elect a Republican governor and have complete control of state government for the first time ever in this state. It's been an incredible honor to serve as the leader of this team and as the Speaker of the House. Thank you so much for coming, for participating in this process. Together we can turn this state red. Thank you so much.